Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this panel discussion about creative careers. My name is Tom and I work for the recruitment team at Norwich University of the Arts. I'll be online today throughout to kind of help this session and to help get your questions answered. So I'm just going to kind of read through a little bit of an introduction to this session uh, and then I'm going to hand over to the panel to introduce themselves. And the panel by the way, is a, a mixture of all sorts of different creative individuals from all sorts of areas of the creative industries. So hopefully it will be really useful for you to get an idea of, of how that could impact you and make a difference to your journey as well. So um, I just want to give you a little bit of information about how today's session is going to work. It would be great if you could submit your questions to us via the Q&A box on your screen. Submit as many questions as you like. There's no such thing as a stupid question, and I'll do my best to get through as many of them as I can over the next hour. Um, if you have a question for a particular panelist, do make sure that you mark um, or make it clear which panelist that's for in the question. We'll be recording today's session as well, so if you experience any technical problems, we'll be making this available afterwards by email, so you won't miss anything. <clears throat> If a member of the panel, panel experiences any technical problems or if their internet connection drops out, we'll try to reconnect them for about five minutes. So please bear with us if this happens. So that's pretty much me done. We'll start off with some introductions and please be sending over your questions over the Q&A as I mentioned. So um, can we start with Amy, if you could introduce yourself, please. Absolutely, thank you. Um, so yeah, hi everyone, great to meet you, albeit through a screen. Um, so my name is Amy Shaw, I'm a senior user experience consultant at Foolproof. And before you kind of go, what on earth does that mean? Trust me, I still haven't found a succinct explanation for what it actually means. So I'll do my best to explain. Um, my mum thinks I build websites, which I guess is part of what, what I do. So I work for Foolproof. Um, we're an experienced design agency and we, we kind of complete the end to end design process for digital products. So um, I work in the, the research team. So I effectively speak to users, customers who interact with digital products, everything from a banking app through to uh, the PlayStation interface, through to those little systems that you get in stores where you scan a product and see if it's in stock. Um, I interview and do research with the customers and users of those products to make sure that the digital experience is the best it can be. Um, so, as I say, I ask a lot of questions, um, but I'm here to answer your questions today. So, yeah, do do send them through. Great. Thanks, Amy. Chris. Hi, guys. I'm Chris. Um, I'm a founder and one of the guys who runs uh, Copper Crayon. We're a Norwich-based um, uh, promotional video uh, business. We do training videos and, uh, and other bits as well. Uh, I graduated in 2015 from uh, Leeds Uni and shortly after that I moved to uh, to Norwich where a couple of my friends who I went into Copper Crown with uh, were working at NUA. Um, we got some help from NUA in um, moving into some office space and getting our first few clients uh, through the doors and uh, yeah, from there we kind of it started snowballing and um yeah we're still going today and um yeah hopefully i've got any questions that i can answer any questions for any budding filmmakers out there who are thinking of doing a similar thing to what i am great thanks chris alwyn hi uh, um my name is alwyn um i graduated from uh norwich university of the arts in 2018 um and have uh, had a job like very close to, to NUA actually, um, working as a, a 2D motion designer, it says as a job title, which is actually just a fancy way of saying that I'm an animator. Um, so I just tend to, to make things move, sort of do commercial, uh, you know, marketing uh, and advertising work. Um, and now work at Uncor Media, which is a technology and marketing agency. Great, thank you. And Jordan. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Jordan. Um, I studied uh, games art and design at NUA 
a uh, long time ago now. I graduated in 2011. Um, I currently work as a concept artist in the games industry. Um, I work for EA right now and I've been in the industry now for about six years. Um, I've worked uh, as a freelance artist. I've also worked um, on like mobile games and console games and uh yeah I've, I've had like uh in my short amount of time i've had like quite a lot of experience of kind of working in lots of different studios and um over a short amount of time so that's been good and bad in certain ways but uh <laughs> but um yeah um hopefully you've got some questions uh, about games and uh, i'll be happy to answer them so yeah excellent thanks jordan so what i've got is a, a series of questions lined up that are kind of typical questions that i'm going to put to, to the panel um, but whilst um, I go through some of these, please do feel free to send over any of your questions. As I mentioned, it doesn't matter how, how silly you think they are, we'd love to answer your questions so you can get the most out of this session. So I'm going to start us off with just a, a really simple one, um, which is what, what GCSEs or A-levels, BTEC subjects um, did you take when you, or do you recommend taking in particular when it comes to going into your career path in, in particular? So I hope that made sense. Um, Jordan, can I kick off with you for this one? What what courses from GCSE to A level or BTEC level, foundation course level? What what courses would you recommend to someone going into to your industry? And if you could remind us of the the, the job that you do, just um, to make it clear for people. Yeah, yeah. I think the most obvious one is obviously art. You know, like I did GCSE art, um, and then went on to do um, art at A level as well, and. Um, those, I, honestly, those were kind of like the two most useful ones um, that I thought were like necessary for taking to kind of get into games, art and design at university as well. Um, I must admit, like before, before I got to uni, like I wasn't necessarily sure just how, um, like what degrees would really help me to get onto that course. But I think looking back on it now, like it was mostly just kind of the, the art based more the art based ones really um and but like and you might also think that oh because you're going into games games art and design it's more kind of technical based or it's more kind of digital based so fine art might not help in that kind of that way but it really does you know because you know you, the principles that you're learning are all um, exactly the same like regardless of whether you're putting them down on paper or you're putting them down on a screen so um for me yeah personally it was like uh, mostly uh, like art really and <laughs> that yeah. was kind of kind of really it but yeah <laughs> great thank you and alwyn i i think yours your kind of profession is, is most sim the most similar of the panel that we've got to to jordan's um being an, an animator arguably so w would you add anything to that would you did you have a different part yeah of um as, as far as recommendations go, I I didn't really sort of know which direction I wanted to take um, sort of growing up. So uh, the, the thing that I was very sure of that I wanted to do something creative. So that very much sort of informed what courses I did. Um, but art was definitely one of them. I studied that at GCSE uh, and I wanted to do a, a graphic design course then as well, but there were actually not enough people to warrant that course being started. So I didn't try that until college. Um, so, um, and then in college I studied uh, a, a bit of IT. Um, I also did a, a vocational course in uh, media studies um, and then um, did an AS in computing, which I wasn't a huge fan of at all, um, but it, it was somehow sort of informative to help sort of guide and, and sort of figure out what I actually wanted to do. Um, because at, at first I was um, uh, very much convinced that I wanted to, to sort of go into the game design area. And I think a, a lot of people sort of grow up with that idea of, yeah, I want to do this very specific thing without knowing exactly what you, you know, what the role actually entails. Um, so it wasn't until right before uni where, um, I realized, oh, maybe, you know, I, I don't specifically want to do games design, but um, having picked up, you know, uh, picked up all of these di different skills, like over the last couple of years, I realized that animation is, was like a general, like a generalist skill that kind of had like a little bit of everything that I liked. Um, so yeah, I, I very much based that decision of, you know, if there, if there's something I want to get really good at, well, debatable how to sort of turning out um, but if there's something that I want to get good at in, in three years then like I want animation to be that thing um, 
Good. So yeah, but art is definitely very, yeah, it, it is very handy to have in general. <laughs> cool, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go to Amy now. So Amy, I, I, from what I understand, in, in the past you were really interested in graphics, but also mathematics as well, like what, once upon a time. But what, what was your, your journey like to being a user experience designer? What, what courses kind of tie in with, with that type of I mean, it was a bit of a roller coaster, to be honest. Um, so I had to, I actually had to look back at the GCSEs that I, I chose um, based on the question when I saw it. Um, that just shows how kind of influential I thought they were at the time. I kind of chose the ones I enjoyed. And I, I have to say, like, I'm pleased I did that because I think you get the most out of them when you pick the ones that you enjoy. Um, in terms of A-levels, I sort of followed a similar path, actually, but for my levels I did all of the sciences maths and then art which I think is a pretty clear explanation that I had no idea what direction I wanted to go into I was kind of good at science and maths and it sort of just flowed um and and for art it was just something I really enjoyed and actually amazingly I found a career that ha has kind of spiraled out of both of those so as a researcher I have to use a lot of the statistics and mathematical kind of elements that I've learned science is very logical and again we kind of um, use a lot of that in in the work that we do and then of course the design and creative element comes from the art so it kind of was all there but I think the probably the most important point is I didn't really know it at the time I did things that I enjoyed and that I that I thought I would quite like a career in and I didn't quite know the shape of it but um, it worked out well. Great thank you and and Chris what about yourself like being a filmmaker what works for film? That seems like a bit of a different ball game. Yeah, well, um, what was interesting listening to all those answers there, especially the ones about art, um, is that my, my experience was quite different because, um, well, for a start, I was quite a naughty kid, actually, leading right <laughs> up to, uh, uh, to when I went into A-levels, whereas, um, like Amy said, I actually picked the A-levels I enjoyed and I wanted to do and actually my attainment went up quite a lot because I was doing something I knew I liked. Um, now, I knew I was well, I felt like I was creative, but I, I couldn't draw. And I'm, I wasn't very artistic in like a arts and crafts kind of way with my hands. I knew I wasn't very good at that, but I, I did still feel like I was creative. And, but I couldn't express myself basically. Um, and I did end up doing media studies and in there, at least the course at the time, I, you could make music videos, you could make a short drama piece or um, mini documentary pieces. There's several modules which do that kind of stuff. And that was when I first started thinking, oh, I'm actually really enjoying this. And I was doing, and the teachers were saying, yeah, you're doing a good job here. And that's where I started to fall in love with it. And in addition to that, one thing I always remembered I enjoyed as well was um, English literature, because some of the tools they give you to analyze bits of literature, you can use to analyze bits of film. So if you look at stuff like, um, way something is said or some of the dialogue used in, in a film and um, you look at the dialogue used in the book then and how they tell a story what's being expressed through the dialogue or even stuff what's in when a, when you read a, um, a chapter of a book and it's takes place in a, in a certain room what's in the room and what's the weather like outside and what's the mood that's created and then you look at the same thing in a piece of film then yeah, the, the tools you're using for analysis actually end up being very similar. So when I went to uni and I did a lot of film analysis, I realized, yeah, it's all the same kind of things we're doing in English literature as well. So yeah, that's my kind of take on it. Um, yeah, do what you love. And if you don't feel like you're particularly artsy, but you know you're creative, don't worry about thinking it's not for you because there's other ways you can quickly learn to express yourself. So cool. yeah, I hope that's useful. Thank you, Chris. Um, right, we've had a couple of questions in, so uh, thank you for putting those over. Um, so the first one is, what experiences or work experiences do you think would be good to get into any of your, your industries? Um, so I'm going to put on the spot, I'm going to put Jordan on the spot. So work experiences, opportunities, what, what type of things? Um, that's a tricky question, actually, because it's quite hard to kind of get um, a lot of it's not necessarily hard, but like it's a bit trickier to get internships and things like that in game studios, especially if there aren't a lot of game studios around in the area that you live in, for example, and things like that. But um, it's I think 
when you say kind of like more stuff like that, 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 that comes more online, you know, and things, um, I think if you're trying to get more work experience, you you have to, especially in games, you have to start looking uh, more for online projects and more for kind of like more community kind of like based kind of like projects that you'll do together instead of like finding things that might be more face to face because um, you'll be able to kind of like, uh, if you, I remember I did one, a very similar thing when I was um, just, when I just left NUA actually myself and I joined this uh, um, online kind of studio and like I did um, some concept artwork for them and it was like all like very kind of just being friends and just kind of, uh, you know, there wasn't any kind of uh, uh, necessarily payment coming out of it, but it was all about the idea of working together and getting that kind of experience of learning about what um, kind of things I would be doing later on in my hopeful career. So I'd say like, um, especially with games, if you want to get experience, I think it's about kind of trying to build connections online and trying to find um, projects that you, uh, can kind of just get involved with and do and you know, do something and do something in you know like you know, things like that um as long as you just not make sure you're not getting like kind of taken advantage of or anything like that, that that's the most important thing because you don't want to just join a join a project and then end up doing loads of free work for someone that's really bad but um but yeah i'd say trying to find trying to find projects online with games i think that's a that's a quite a good a good idea maybe cool cool thank you chris i i saw you nodding a lot so it made me think i want to go to chris next so same question goes to you in terms of work experiences what type of thing to get into the film industry um well it's very um it's dependent on what you want to do in the film industry but you can always find um some uh runner jobs for fairly naff tv shows like a uh, flog it. I, I did a did some running jobs for flog it for a while um and <laughs> Yeah, as Jordan was saying, it's not always, it's in fact, it's definitely not about the money at that stage. I was studying, yeah, at the time, and it was just something I did because I knew I'd be able to start like generating some contacts from that. Um, and also, for me, working in corporate film, um, I needed to um, work out how to um, take the reins for myself on, on a production, very different from doing running on Flog It, where you have very little say and very little creative autonomy or any time at all really it can come i'm sure we'll come back to that in some later questions but with me i needed to learn you know how to speak to the client how to uh, what they wanted to get out of the film how to deliver that for them so i ended up doing really small stuff for um for, for like um the salsa dance class in the local bakery and doing films for um my old school filming their like school plays and that kind of thing really really low level stuff to start learning the ropes of working in corporate film and working with clients um so yeah i wasn't making much or if any money at all not to condone yeah working for free i don't think you should should work free if you got a, a commercial skill you should be being paid for it really and if yeah don't let anyone tell you otherwise but yeah totally agree with jordan um that yeah you got to appreciate yeah you got to kind of get, go go out and make contacts before you uh start rolling in the big bucks so uh, yeah so start small really that's as simple as that great thanks Chris so we've got a few more questions that have come in and um, but before we move on to those I just want to check Amy or Alwyn would you like to add anything in terms of because obviously you're in a, a different industry so would you like to add anything for your past before we, we move on or is it similar yeah I guess I would kind of see because I think there are challenges with getting kind of work experience internships that you know there's always kind of perhaps either competition or you know in in current times it's difficult to kind of get your feet literally physically in the door so you do have to look online and perhaps through other avenues I guess I'd say that um I wouldn't necessarily see experience as kind of doing the job you think you want to do kind of think creatively about that and think what other skills you might need because for example, communication is one of the, the really important tools that I should think we all use, you know, as, as part of our role in, in some respects. So are there ways that you can get a little bit more confident in kind of public speaking or in kind of getting better at communicating uh, via email or on, on social and things like that? So have a look for other experiences because they may not feel kind of as creative, but all of that is really important that, and, and all of it kind of um yeah builds your career in some shape or form great thank you and alwyn do you have anything to add or yeah no <laughs> i um you know as somebody who a couple ago had a 
absolutely zero social skills. Um, I can definitely attest to that. Um, I think one of the biggest things I, I learned, um, you know, that actually helped me, you know, sort of get my, my feet a little bit in the, in the industry is um, just like, like from things or subjects that I actually didn't know that I, you know, actually learned from. Uh, like I remember one of the, um, like one uh, summer job that I had um, was sort of doing the very, very simple photography, but also like sort of talking like to, to the customers there. Uh, and being able to just develop those sort of gear, the skills and putting yourself out there um, just tremendously sort of tra transforms what you're sort of able to do. Um, like I, I know there's a, a lot of people I know that are, you know, 10 times more talented than I am. Um, but, uh, you know, if you don't have anybody to, to make sort of a connection with and sort of start talking, it's really difficult to, to sort of move from, you know, point A to, to point B. Um, so yeah, definitely like if if you sort of do anything, it's, it's getting yourself a little bit out there and not be afraid to sort of start up a conversation or join, uh, you know, a, a networking event. Like, uh, you know, I mean, like, it's a little bit difficult to do those like right now. Um, but yeah, I'd say that definitely helps. Cool, thank you. Um, so we've got a, a question for Chris now. Um, so, um, the from what you have found out from clients, what would you say is important for aspiring an aspiring actor to do or know? That's quite an interesting one. Yeah, um, I might not be the best um, suited person to talk about this. I don't know if anyone else on the panel necessarily is any more than I am, uh, but I have worked with actors before in our films, um, but because I'm not from an acting background, I'll do my best to answer. Um, but yeah, just, don't take it as gospel, that's all. Um, so the, the actors we work with anyway, we would find them on an online um, casting database. Um, so there's one called Star Now, I think we've used. I don't know if that's actually a, a good one. Uh, I don't want to recommend it just in case they're not, you know, but they're the ones we've used before. Um, and I think you basically, yeah, you put um, uh, like, an acting show reel if you have one or a bio about yourself and your previous experiences up on your this database and you um uh it helps for people who work in corporate film like i am if they're looking for a certain person to cast in their films they will yeah they'll reach out and contact you find out what your day rates are find out where you live maybe speak to you on the phone um have an audition with you if it's necessary and go from there so um yeah i'd say if you really don't have any experience then that's fine as well because sometimes some of the, the roles we're looking for in our films you don't really need to have an awful lot of acting experience you could just be it's basically like a model role but for uh for in moving image so um yeah i'd say get yourself on one of some of those databases and you might find yourself um yeah getting a role in a music video or a um or like yeah, like, called, like a promotional film like us, and at least it, there you have that first thing on your CV, that first bit of experience, and from there, hopefully, the next time you get contacted, you can say, yeah, I've been in front of the camera, I've worked with crews before, I know the deal, and you can start building from there. So hopefully that's useful. Cool, thank you for that. So, um, does anyone else have anything to add? And Chris invited people kind of to to respond to that as well. No, you're right. I, I thought that might be the case. Cool. Let's move on to the, the next question. So um, was it hard um, work getting to where you are now? And if so, how do you recommend getting through it? So, yeah, was it difficult to get there? And and how do you overcome those, those obstacles that, that come in the way? Um, I'm going to ask Amy if you could answer this one. You know, I'm trying to think of that saying, is it like that nothing worth having comes easy? Is that the right saying? I guess the, sen the, the, the sentiment that I'm kind of going for is that, yeah, it's it's not always an, an easy ride. I think um, creative careers don't necessarily follow a set path, right? I think we've all ex explained kind of elements today where we've either kind of moved around a little bit or we've not quite known where we want to get to. And I think that in itself is the challenge, but I guess embrace that challenge because 
I, I actually had no idea that my career existed until my last year of university and I discovered it by pure chance. So it was a case of I was networking, I was speaking to people um, around Norwich, around Norfolk that had various kind of networking groups and I, and I just kind of discovered foolproof and discovered this industry. And from there I kind of worked my way up and it was very much from scratch um, because I was discovering it from new. So. I think in terms of was it difficult? Yeah, it was, but it was also really enjoyable because I think you know when you found something that you really enjoy and you know when you found something that really suits the skill set that you've built up. So I think it's a good challenge if that makes sense. Yeah, great. Is it, has anyone got anything they'd like to add to that at all? So I'll go over the question again. So. Uh, was it hard to get to where you are? And if so, how do you recommend getting through it? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say, like, I think um, I didn't really realise when I left university, just not like not to put anyone off, but kind of just how uh, not difficult it was going to be, but just how um, much I needed to do really for to actually kind of reach where I want to get to. Like, it, I think the one thing I would tell myself um, when I was, uh, if I was younger now, was just to kind of, and it sounds pretty really corny, but just to kind of keep going in a way, because I've had so many kind of times um, when uh, you really have to kind of like dig your heels in and be like, I'm going to keep on doing this. I'm going to keep trying to kind of really get to where I want to go. And, you know, um, you get, you, you'll always have times, like I think in any career, but especially like in a creative one, like you said, like where you will have to deal with like like forks in the road or like kind of things that you don't expect um and i think that's been a really good thing about kind of being in this kind of like career because like i could have easily got a job where i'd go to like an office every day and no kind of know my trajectory through life and like i think even though it is really hard i think you've got to look at it in a way of like which i do because i absolutely love what i do and i think you always have to enjoy what you do as a job because if not what, what is the point really you know like um like it's good and it's good to say that you know well like it's hard but like it is it is worth it you know at the end of the day so um but yeah <laughs> great thank you um right i am gonna move on to the next question uh which is um and this one's going to be directed at you, Alwyn. So um, get ready. Um, if you could tell yourself, or your younger self, one vital skill that you've found to be, that you really needed for your job, what would it be? Oh, one, one vital skill. Um, I, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Like, I don't think there was, like, anything in particular that I really wanted I, I think if if there's anything i tell myself now is to to worry a little bit less um because i i think i spent a, a lot of time trying to have like like a set trajectory to thinking um, I, I think a lot of people like including myself like got caught up in and then when i reach this age i should be able to do this and like uh, by the end of my degree i need to have made uh you know a critically acclaimed short film and all of these things uh, and often when you sort of chase chase that idea a little bit too much, you sort of don't realize that you could really be enjoying what you're actually doing. And that's usually the reason how things end up looking great or where you sort of find that you're, you learn the most. Um, so definitely there, there, there's moments occasionally where you don't exactly have things sort of as, as planned. Um, but despite that, you there's always something that you can take away from it. Um, like I didn't immediately jump into sort of the, the industry. I had like a, a couple of months in between where, you know, I had to do a couple of different jobs, but sort of trying to find, um, you know, anything that was like a transferable skill, like whether it be like, oh yeah, if I learned to sort of to talk to people or, or, or you know, um, like I, I did a bit of fundraising like uh, for, for a bit. Um, and at first, like I didn't quite know what it was, you know, something extremely fun to do. Um, but it turned out like I, um, if I ever need to pitch an animation, like I know, uh, you know, I sort of have that, that, that knowledge or that, that skill to help me get there. Um, so yeah, e even though things sort of seem like they have to go, you know, across like a very, uh, a, you know, set path, it's, uh, yeah, take it a little bit easier yourself. Just do the things that you enjoy doing. 
and ultimately that's what sort of helps you get where you want to want to be all right thank you for that that's like wonderfully simple um amy i i've got a similar question that's been sent in for you and um, beforehand from robin it, sa it says um thinking specifically about the mistakes you've made uh, and the learnings that you the learnings that you've taken what advice would you give to yourself starting out five years ago oh wow that's a good one that's a really good one. So, so thinking about the mistakes I've made, what advice would I give to myself starting out five years ago? Do you know, it's really similar to the to the answer that was just given. Um, not to kind of um, repeat exactly what was said, but I think to be a little bit less hard on myself. Um, when I sort of when I found foolproof, I was like yeah as I say everything aligned in terms of my skills and, and in terms of what I wanted to be doing um, and I really just kind of grabbed it with both hands and absolutely ran with it but I ran at such a pace I think I was forgetting to enjoy it and forgetting to kind of acknowledge everything I was learning along the way I was just kind of going through the motions and I think my advice to, to myself five years ago would be to yeah not be so hard on myself to recognize the, the learnings that I'm taking kind of every day, um, whether that be big or small, you know, whether it be pitching to a client and winning that or just delivering a really great presentation or doing something in, a, in an hour's less time than I'd originally planned. I think all of those achievements and wins kind of need to be recognized along the way. If not, you do, you do forget to enjoy it and you forget to give yourself a pat on the back um, for kind of the work that you're doing. So. I think that would be be mine as well. Nice, nice. Um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? If, you know, if you were to tell yourself from five years ago, yeah, Chris. Uh, yeah, it's similar to both those answers, but um, just building on it a little bit more. I think the thing I wish I knew how to do five years ago um, is learning how to say no and how to say no um, properly and, and professionally to things when because um, I think people are aware, especially in a lot of different kinds of creative fields, that you get kind of people fresh out of uni who are really, really desperate and willing to put in some crazy hours and work some, you know, do some like all-nighters to get a piece of work done on time. And um, really, like, it, that shouldn't, you don't want to kind of feed into that culture and you have to learn to say, no, this is, an, uh, you want to say yes to everything because you want to get you, your first job through the door, you want to do a good job for people, and you want to keep your clients happy, but at the same time, you, um, you don't want to allow yourself to become, um, put yourself in positions where you're making life for yourself very, very hard because, as Amy said, you do start to fall out of love with what you're doing very quickly if you go down that path too uh, too much you want to uh, still enjoy it and it also starts to affect the quality of your work if you're trying to say yes to everything and cramming so much work and um, and try and get loads of stuff done when yeah you do want to give your 100 percent to this the start of your career and really give all you can effort wise but you also need to um uh play it smart as well as yeah just giving it uh tons of effort because um yeah the, and knowing how to say no and how to be critical or i heard some kind of bleak thing. i hope that's not coming from me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah so um saying no to clients and still being respectful so i can't do what you're asking me for these reasons um is, is a bit of a bold thing to do and it doesn't come naturally at least it didn't come naturally to me to say i don't feel like this is the right thing to do or I don't feel this is the right approach or I don't think the timeline you're giving me is doable um yeah you have to kind of learn how to how to do it or otherwise yeah you don't end up getting trampled on so but I think that's one thing I really wish I I could have done better five years ago but yeah you do pick it up as you go that's so valuable thank you for writing that mate um so um we, we've had a really tasty question I like this one <laughs> So uh, is it worth going to uni for the creative industries? So um, I, um, I'd, I'd love to, I'm going to ask a couple of you, but I, you know, you, I want to give you the, all the opportunity to pitch into this one. I guess you, it, it would probably be mainly talking about your, your field, your, your line of work in particular. 
Um, so, Amy, can I go to to you for this one first? <laughs> I was trying to hide. <laughs> Subtly trying to move away. Oh, careful what I say on this one. No, do you know what? When I went to uni on a complete whim, to be completely honest with you, uh, like I say, when I, I chose my A-levels, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I, I kind of went to university pretty much because my sister did and I, and I followed her path and I thought you know that that looked like fun that looked like something that she's done really well out of she's got a career a career in the creative industry as well and I kind of thought that that suits me I'd quite like to have a go reflecting on it I'm really glad I did for the connections that I built as well as the skills that I've built I think that there are other opportunities out there and if I was to go back and do it again I might explore those as well I think um yeah apprenticeships for example I think internships moving into careers kind of straight away are all options that shouldn't be kind of dismissed or ignored I think from a personal perspective I'm really pleased of the kind of whole package that university gave me um and and not just kind of yeah not just the skills I think the kind of the the connections as I said as well so yeah there's a lot to it it's a big decision but but one that worked for me definitely thank you for that um Alwyn um so I'll just repeat the question again so is it worth going to university to get into the creative industries yeah, so sort of piggybacking off um, of what you said, Amy. Um, it, it, it's I, I feel like you, you tend to learn a lot more than just you know the the, the field that you're studying uh, when you go to university. Um, so I I myself was sort of in a position right before uh, uni or when I finished college where uh, sort of I was thinking about what do I really want to do? Um, is this sort of, is it really worth paying the money to, to you know, obviously that isn't, it isn't like a, a small amount by, by any means uh, these days. So, you, I mean, ultimately you gotta be, sh you know, sure um, that you want to do something like that. Like at the same time though, I think you, you quite quickly learn that it isn't, you know, it isn't something that you notice every day. Um, yeah, especially when you sort of talk about it at the end of the monetary side of it. It's it's more, hey, I, I'm learning these skills, but I'm also doing it alongside of people who learn similar skills and are sort of in a, in a similar group. Um, and you usually end up learning, you know, a lot from each other when you're also so doing that. So I, I'm, I wouldn't be sort of quick to say that um, it's, it's absolutely essential, but like you, there, there are a lot more benefits to it you know, just besides, hey, I'm studying this specific course, um, and like I, I need to have this on my my CV to to get like a, you know a job in. Um, but yeah, I'm sure others could speak better on that than than I could. Okay, hey, well, thank thank you for that. Um, Chris or Jordan, I'm, Jordan, I'm going to come to you next with a, a question that's specifically for you. But do we, either of you have anything to add to that? Um. Well, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, again, I'll just kind of repeat the same kind of thing as well. But I, I, I think that one of the most important things that I took from going to university was the idea of just becoming, and this again, I just, I just sound so corny all the time, don't I? Like they're just becoming like a different person again, you know? Like I went to, I went to university and I was really, really shy. Um, I. I kind of left it feeling like I had at least, you know, socialized more and I talked to more people and um, actually looking at, um, you know, with my actual degree that I did, like I can easily say that I wouldn't have got like the, you know, the, the, the foundation and, and like the step up that I needed to kind of learn about um, like, you know, stuff for games and concept art and things like that. So um, I think the way that I look at my degree now is the way that like I, um probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now if I hadn't done that um obviously there are definitely ways that you have to look at your degree in a very um self-taught way as well you know because you, you, you when you're doing art like you can't just expect us to kind of do a degree and then be like fantastic at it you've really got to put the effort in and you've got to put a lot of like your own kind of time and your own kind of research and uh just, just drawing all the time into it as well but um yeah i feel for me like it's a bit of a, a two half thing you know you, you go and you get a foundation but you also kind of like learn to you know start to speak and as you said before speaking to people more and like being more 
um confident and you know obviously going out drinking no not going out drinking and like you know just in this <laughs> and um and yeah but yeah just just trying to trying to just you know throw away kind of like you being an 18 year old and kind of moving into being more than adult really I guess so great thank you um so I've got a series of questions that are coming thank you so much everybody for your questions as well by the way these are great um I what I want to do is um do a, a few kind of quick quick fire questions to you Jordan and you Chris that, that have come in so the first one for you Jordan is um uh how did you find your first job in the games industry oh um I it was actually quite a good story if that's quite a good question then actually um so I um my very first studio job like not my first freelance thing so I, I got my first studio job in 2014 um and I actually got that from uh like deviant art which is which, which sounds really um suspicious and a bit kind of like naughty but it's not um like i got an, a message one day from um the who would be then my art manager for a studio in dundee um and i i replied to her obviously it looks quite sketchy blah blah blah, blah. Um, but it turned out actually being um a proper interview and i went for there and i got the job and I think from what I took from that is the idea because like the one, the one thing I always say to everyone is to be absolutely shameless and just to put all of your work online and just try to get like you know as many people to look at it as possible because that's the only way in games you're going to get a job uh, not the only way but like one of like you know one of the easiest ways to kind of get yourself out there because if people can't see your work um, like they're not going to hire you are they so you know you've, you've got to be I, 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 I don't necessarily pride myself on being shameless, but like I absolutely, absolutely am. And <laughs> that was that was one of the reasons that I managed to get a job because I wasn't afraid to show off my my artwork at the time, you know. And um, I think there is definitely this kind of like nervousness that people have about showing their artwork and not knowing at what stage they think is good enough to show their artwork, you know. But I think that, you know, regardless of what stage you think you're at, you've got to show people because you'll get feedback if you want that or not. And um, people will actually be able to see you. So yeah, but um, yeah, so and I, yeah, I, I, got, I just got an email, an email on DeviantArt and then went from there, so yeah. Cool, thank you for that. Chris, um, this is a question for you. Um, where's the best place uh, to live for a career in film? Uh, Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, in all seriousness, it depends on on what uh, sector of, of film we're talking about here. If we're talking about, um, uh, yeah, feature film and, and uh, cinema, then probably uh, it's hard to not to say that we're close to London. The more chance you're going to have of getting or being able to to um, work. Uh, get those first kind of jobs you need at, at um, in a studio. But um, in terms of corporate film, actually, I found being outside of London um, probably was quite useful in a way. It's a little bit like when you're in London, I imagine, well, you're just fighting competition out of your ears of people who have been doing it longer than you, who are better than you, who are smarter than you, who have more resources than you. Uh, but whereas you come to Norwich, there's people who are still all of those things, don't get me wrong, even in a place comparatively much smaller than uh, London. But um, yeah, you, you, there are more opportunities you can find to um, um, being a kind of the pond is smaller so you feel like a slightly bigger fish in a way if that's a good metaphor to use mm. so hopefully uh yeah you get what i mean by that yeah yeah great thank you um so my next question uh i'm going to ask this of amy um okay what what advice would you give uh, to university students who are trying to identify the right career for them whilst navigating the current climate Ah, interesting one. So I guess I'll take that in, in two halves. So in terms of trying to navigate and find the right career for them, like, don't force it. I mean, for goodness sake, like, I, I found mine by complete accident. And it's, it's the best thing that ever happened. So I would say kind of don't force trying to kind of pinpoint a career or pinpoint, um, yeah, something that, that you want to do it, it will come, it will happen. I would say think about it on a bit of a broader scale. Think about the type of 
brands or companies that you'd like to work for and then look at the opportunities that are within those companies and perhaps you'll see different careers or see different roles that you didn't didn't quite know that were there also just kind of talk to people um I mean opportunities like this are of course wonderful but there are other things out there where you can kind of connect with alumni you can speak to people that have kind of got jobs in the industry be that in Norwich or outside of Norwich and and look for opportunities that you you didn't necessarily knew existed so yeah don't don't force it but just have conversations and see what's out there and and trust me you'll you'll find something and know when it fits um and the other kind of part I guess the current climate I'd, I'd be interested in what everyone else thinks of this actually um, in, in their slightly different roles. But for me, I would say that we're kind of busier than ever when it comes to the current climate. Um, we work um, on, on kind of digital products and, and interfaces, as I mentioned. So people are using those now more than ever because we're, we're all doing things digitally because we can't do things physically. So actually there's kind of a huge recruitment drive that's going on at Foolproof and across the industry actually at the moment um, in terms of UX. So the current climate might seem scary, but actually I think there are opportunities there um, if you look for them. Great, thank you. Uh, Alwyn, I'm gonna ask the same question uh, of yourself, so I'm just gonna repeat it. So what advice would you give um, to a university student who is uh, trying to identify the right career path for them whilst navigating the current climate? Uh, yeah, definitely don't, well, first of all, like sort of like <laughs> Jordan said, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, definitely make sure you at least have, you know, have sort of stuff up. Um, but it is, yeah, no, it, like you like you said before, like it is kind of, you know, seemingly difficult and uh, it seems like sort of getting a getting a career started at least seems like a, a very very volatile to do like in these times um but at the same time there there are also so many more opportunities that like has strange, strangely come out of it um like as an animator i know there was like this this point where it sort of fluctuated a lot where a lot of people wanted to you know who, who usually you know have something done uh in moving image or, or film uh that then couldn't you know at the start of lockdown that then turned to animation because it was a sort of a way to uh to do that in the meantime so sort of taking you know uh, like a sort of advantage over uh, you know on those little in, the, in those little moments can can sort of help you still um you know get things and also not to sort of be afraid that somebody might turn you down like i, I i've had friends who um, sort of were in the middle of applying for a certain job who, um, you know, then got told like, oh, because, you know, things are, we exactly know where things are going, uh, despite you being a great candidate, we, you know, we, we can't really do it. Um, is, you know, it, on those businesses is, is completely fair to do, but also that there's like another opportunity to find out there, despite it being a bit tricky. Uh, and for myself, even like, um, at some point, like I, uh, earlier this year, because we didn't sort of know where, where this climate was going, uh, faced redundancy uh, and and actually sort of moved to freelance for it for a little bit. Uh, and just knowing that there are still so many opportunities that you can get into that are still really enjoyable to do and invaluable like experience wise, uh, that then can lead you to to the next thing. So just don't don't be afraid to sort of keep in contact with people. I found um, like LinkedIn to actually be really helpful to, to make those connections and to see what uh, other people whose work you sort of admire or the people you'd like genuinely like working with, um, that they're usually not too too quick to pass on at least, you know, sort of having a conversation with you. So um, yeah, there, there, there are a lot of stuff out there. You just gotta sort of find and, and sort of persevere through the you know the occasional difficult moment. Okay, th hey, thank you for that. Um, Chris or Jordan, do you, do you have anything that you would add to that, or if not, we, we've got. Sorry, yeah. Chris. Yeah, just uh, about the context of it, uh, uh, the current climate. I think, uh, yeah, coronavirus-wise, um, yeah, there's definitely been a boom in work for us because um, people, well, 
businesses are trying to promote themselves in different ways or trying to promote their how they're responding to uh, the current climate and I, I believe this I mean I wasn't in the industry at this uh, time at all but I heard that in 2008 in the economic recession there and it was a similar thing there was a boom in marketing and um, advertising around then as well because uh, yeah businesses were trying to respond and they were trying to um, they, they had to rethink their offering and creatives come into that a lot because they yeah we've got to get out there and yeah i don't know change their website or get them a new film or get them a new animation and etc so um yeah there's definitely been lots of opportunities for us recently i don't think it's hampered well it has hampered out our industry in a way but um in yeah it's opened the door in in different respect too so yeah i wouldn't worry at least in my field i wouldn't worry too much about thinking oh it's you know is coronavirus going on maybe i should actually not think about going down this path because yeah the door's definitely still open um despite the pandemic yeah um, if i could quickly jump in i'd, I'd say with, with games like um i think games are the one industry really that has really has not been affected by this kind of at all in a way because um if you think about it, like I've I've been working home, working from home anyway, um, remotely since January 2019. So like when this hit, like nothing really kind of changed for me, really in, in a way, which is kind of good in a way. Um, and because of and because of that, um, our industry it can be mostly online, and you know you you can you can easily do all your work at home. So like um if anything like i think people i still i'm still seeing studios like recruiting people like like halfway through the pandemic like months ago and i still are now so if um and obviously that's like, just said before like games are one of those things that everyone needs right now you know like games aren't going to go away anytime soon like everyone wants to have something to play so um yeah like if you're still thinking about going to games and coronavirus then get, do it like we haven't really been that affected <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, we, we've got a, a few more questions to get through and time is racing on. Um, some of the questions that we've had put to us um, are really great questions, but I, I don't know if we're going to have time to, to get onto them uh, as, as they're quite specific. But the panellists have um, um, provided us with contact details as well. So um, if you do have specific questions, um, then do feel free to, to respond to, to those contact details. Um, or through those contact details. So my next question, um, it goes actually to you, Jordan. Um, do you think it's harder for girls to get into the gaming industry? Um, no, I, I don't think it is. Um, like, like that's because like, there's a, it's quite a, it's quite a strict answer, that, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. So I think the thing about games industry, like, yeah, it's got um, there's definitely a, a side to it which you can't ignore where. Um, it's very, very male centric still. Um, the, like, there's a very high percentage of people who are in a, who are, in a, are male. Um, there is a lot of like uh, um, things online, you know, like bullying and trolling and things like like the women in the industry that you see still see a lot. Um, and and I can see that that that's obviously a deterrent to some people, um, and I can completely understand that. Um, the one thing I will say though is that um, the games industry is an incredibly uh, I, I think anyway a very a very liberal place and a very liberal industry um like the majority like a lot of the studios that i've worked in have been uh they have been very mixed um they haven't been mostly kind of mostly male i do think the idea of them it being very male centric is reducing now um but i think ob obviously this is just based on kind of the issues that i've been in but like i think the games industry as as a whole in certain aspects is a very uh, forward thinking and very progressive industry to be in. And um, uh, yeah, but um, I can still understand the idea of being worried because yeah, you can't really escape the idea that it's still very, very male based. And I think, you know, um, yeah, so it, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a weird question, but, um, but I still don't think that, I, I don't think it is difficult. It, it shouldn't be difficult, obviously. So, um, but yeah thank you <laughs> that's, that's great um so chris I've, I've got a question for you and then i'm gonna go to to alwyn after that um so the question is i want to be a screenwriter slash director so um i want to take film at university but i don't know what to take with it would you recommend english or drama to assist with that which of those would complement you feel 
Yeah, I saw that question come up earlier. I had a um, good think about it. And um, I think if the English course you're looking at is a creative writing English course, then um, yeah, then you'll learn a lot of useful things and it will be useful. I imagine it'll be much more expansive the kind of things you learn. You'll learn to, oh, my cousin did uh, creative writing and he ended up doing lots of poetry and, um, you know, like novel writing and that kind of thing, as well as um, um, commercial copywriting. So you learn a lot more doing an English creative writing course. I'm not saying you won't, you won't learn anything learning a drama course at all. I, I didn't want that to come out like that. Um, I think either I want to is you might find that doing a creative writing course gives you a, um, a perhaps more of a versatility in how in, in the craft of writing you're going to learn. Whereas if you just take a, um, a drama course, you might not necessarily feel as comfortable being able to do so much writing in other respects. But if you're certain you just want to, I'm saying that because it, a lot of people. Um, set out wanting to be a screenwriter director in fact I did I know everyone who I learned went to uni with did everyone else at A levels um all wanted to be screenwriters directors and yeah unfortunately none of us have actually become <laughs> those things so you have to do sort of think in your in the back of mind I, I want to learn some skill sets what which I can apply to other jobs as well but yeah drama yeah can definitely um give you that but i think if you do like a, a creative writing course in english course then you're gonna be able to maybe drop into more fields perhaps perhaps but yeah um maybe sorry that's not the best answer there but hopefully i gave you some think about it anyway <laughs> yeah absolutely thank you for that chris appreciate that um so alwyn this is quite an interesting one um, does age affect the way people treat you in your industry? Or how does it affect the way they treat you in your industry? Uh, I, or well, I'm, you know, I haven't been in the industry like for, for a huge amount of time. So the, there were definitely moments where like I, I personally, and maybe just, you know, it was just me being uh, superstitious about it, but I, I was very, almost very much trying to to be a lot more professional <laughs> or no, not professional is not the right word but to to you know be older than i than i actually am um and you, you in a way just have to sort of like embrace that you are the age you are and if you could sort of grow from it i think what ultimately helps is if you just end up if you just end up doing good work and be able to, to you know, either explain your points like well, uh, and just have you know your your actual portfolio to sort of back it up, it it does sort of help tremendously. Um, you do have that that obviously that issue of, you know, uh, when I've been uh, applying for jobs in the past where they they have some ridiculous criteria where people want you know seven years of experience but also want you to be you know take on a junior position and, and stuff like that so there's definitely like weird you know um oddities that sort of don't really work <laughs> to like together um so i i'd say sort of getting into it from the start might be a little bit tricky but i think it's also up to the, the you know your the people who employ you um that they have an understanding of yes i i i know what to expect from you like you you shouldn't you know you shouldn't have to be or, or at least have the talent or, or the skill or, or the experience of somebody who's been in the industry for two decades um you just have to have a good work you know ethic and and be able to or actually sort of have ideas that you know will will work um so yeah it, it's definitely like a little bit tricky at the start but i think the people you ought to work with anyways are the people who see the the skill that you you know currently have anyways um thank you i'm not sure if that's a good answer <laughs> it, I was, do you mind if i jump in with like a, a, a perspective on that and um, i'm conscious of time so i'll be super quick but what i would say is like you if, if you're worried about kind of being young and not having that experience like use it to your advantage I think there are so many um, kind of companies and, and industries and careers that want a fresh perspective, that want people that have, are kind of like, you know, ready and raring to go with with new skills and new creativity. And, and let's
let's face it, if you're if you're just starting in an industry, the kind of world is your oyster. Whereas if you've by, kind of been in industry or been in a, in a role for a while, it's not the same for everyone. But you can kind of form some kind of bad habits or quite narrow thinking. So I would say like think about using perhaps what's deemed as a lack of experience or, or deemed as kind of being young um, to your advantage in that respect. Right. Yeah, exactly. The whole company I work at is this sort of position in that in, in that way to see like we, you know, you, you tend to come up with different ideas sometimes. That's just sort of naturally how it works. So definitely do take advantage of that and don't, you know, shy away from it. So that's a very good point. Thank you. And Chris? Yeah, I mean, those answers were pretty much what I was going to say, probably said in a better way than me anyway. But, uh, <laughs> I, I remember being an, go, going to a similar uh, conference like this is and asking that question to uh, um, the panel who was much far ahead of me at the time. Uh, well, when I was you know, 17 or 18, I think I asked that question because I was really interested as well. Um, because a lot of the time when you're talking to um, a client and you know, I could be well when i was 21 22 years old right at the start of copper crayon and i'd be talking to the marketing director and having to explain our ideas and our thinking and they, they could be much older than us much more experienced than us and it is daunting and there is no way to hide from that that you feel like you are um lacking in something there but yeah as both the guys said before me you've got to kind of find a way to spin that to your advantage give a freshness of perspective and um i think the when i asked that question um does age is age going to be a problem but before i think the person who answered said um if you bring it into a room with you just make sure you're doing it in the right way like i keep your perspective fresh and keep um using it to your advantage but don't bring it into a room if you're just going to overthink it or you're worried you're, you're just going to get hung up on it just know where you stand don't get don't get cocky or arrogant and thinking right i'm gonna i'm just a new kid on the block and i'm going to tell all these people how to do and what to do be be respectful but also think yeah i've got something i want to bring to the table and um yeah and i think that's that's the best way to look at it great thank you for that you know what? I've really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much. Like I, I think we can easily just keep on going for, for another hour. Um, thank you so much to our wonderful panellists. Like, I've really enjoyed this. Um, I hope that, that you guys have been asking questions and found this useful as well. And thank you so much for your questions. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so um, just to, to round things off a little bit, we hope today's been helpful uh, and that it, there's been something that you've been able to take away that's been quite inspiring and also just giving you a bit of wisdom as well to, to think about. Um, so do remember to check out the EngageWorks programme as there's some uh, other great panel discussions going on tomorrow that you might be interested in. And if you haven't already, you can book these on the uh, Young Norfolk Arts website, which is www.youngnorfolkarts.org.uk forward slash engage hyphen works. Um, if you wanted to find out more about NUA specifically, um, I recommend signing up to one of our online open days. We've actually got um, a couple of open days coming up on Friday and Saturday of this week. And that way you can get a feel for each of our courses. You can meet students and staff members and ask your questions. So please do join us for that. Um, we'll also be starting up our campus tours of the university again in December. Um, lockdown pending and um, so it's a great way to get a feel for our campus our creative community and see whether it's the right type of environment for yourself and um, if you'd like more information about either of these things you can visit our website at www.nua.ac.uk or you can drop me an email uh, or the team I'm part of at student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk so once again a massive thank you to our panelists Thank you for joining us and that's it for now. Thank you very much. We hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.